Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how I recreate this design from Dreamy Little Nails. This is her Sakura design. I will put the link in the description below to her socials, but I did this as a set of custom order press-ons for a customer. And so I thought I would just go through and show you kind of my start to finish process, beginning with how I size my nail tips. So I don't know that I've ever really shown this in full before, I've maybe talked about it, but the easiest way to size nails in my opinion is asking your customer to send you a picture of their hand, each one flat on a surface with a standard size coin next to it. What you can do then is take that picture, use a device of some sort and blow it up and match the coin sizes together. So you match the coin in the picture to a coin that you have in real life. And now you have a life-sized hand model of your client's nails. This makes it super easy to pick out the nail tips, see which ones are going to fit the best. Now, I always err on the side of caution and also take their measurements in millimeters, so I do ask them to measure in millimeters. Then I can kind of like compare what they've put for their measurements versus the sizes that I'm choosing in um, through this method. So I just, I like having both to compare, make sure that I'm getting the best fit. I did ask this client if she was okay with me putting her pictures in the video. She said yes, so thank you so much to her if she's watching. But I thought it might just be useful to any of you who are looking to start selling press-ons and are not sure how to get the most accurate sizing. I will say for the thumbnail, you'll see I had her send me a separate picture of just the thumb on the counter flat. I do recommend you do that for the thumbs because they will not lay flat with the whole hand on the table. And you definitely want to get pictures of both hands. People can have different sizes on each of their hands. I tend to be a little bit bigger on the right side, so definitely get pictures of both hands. But yeah, that is my sizing process. Super easy, super quick. I'm just doing some filing here. I have to file down the jagged tips where that nail tip was connected to probably some sort of mold through the manufacturing process. So I just shave those down to make it nice and smooth. At this point, you might also end up shaving the sidewalls if you did have to go up in size for a tip. I always try to err on the side of caution and pick the larger tip if it looks like a tip might fit, but also might be too small. And then I will just shave down the edges as needed. I'm wiping off the dust here. Attaching my nail tips to these stands. If you don't have um, these magnetic stands, if you have like the older version where the little pedestal has kind of a fatter head, I would strongly recommend these ones. I will try to remember to link them down below, but the nice thing is that the little pedestal for the nail tip, the head of that where the nail tip actually rests, is a lot smaller than some of the acrylic ones I've seen. They tend to be big and then they actually stick out from under the pinky nails, at least for me and the sizes that I work with, I've noticed that they uh, tend to stick out from under those pinky nails. I'm just wiping away the dust here. Any of that extra filing dust that is on there, I take a lint-free wipe and I just go over each nail. And then I'm using my Gel X Apray Tip Primer I use tip primer and just really scrub the surface to make sure it's ready for paint. You can file this down, just use like a buffing block and go over each nail. I personally just find this easier to do, it's quicker for me, um, but whatever method works. Just something to note, this tip primer in the silver bottle is definitely not for your actual nails, this is just for the nail tips. So please do not try to use a silver bottle tip primer for your natural nails. And just a disclaimer before we get started, I forgot to add this in my last video, but I always wanna make sure to warn everyone, do your research please if you are going to be doing nails at home, check into the products that you're using, make sure that you understand if it has any allergens that you might be allergic to, and whenever possible, I just suggest wearing gloves to avoid contact as much as possible with uncured gel. So before I can apply art, I apply a base coat. I did that off camera. You've probably seen me do it a billion times. This is the Nail Bio Gold Flakes, and I thought I was going to use this for the gold flakes on the tips of the nails, but 
I decided it was a little too silver toned, so this is just some gold foil that I got off of like probably Pimu or AliExpress, something like that. It's a little bit difficult to work with, as you can see here. Um, it stuck to the silicone tool that I was using to try to pull it out of the container, but I just used a pretty densely packed ombre brush and just picked up the little gold flakes with that and applied them to the nail. Because these are base coated, the gold foil actually sticks pretty well to the nail. I don't have to use any like transfer glue or anything. Now, if you were to wipe off the sticky layer of the base coat, I definitely would recommend using a layer of transfer glue to apply the gold flake, but um, because I have that base coat, I did not need to. I don't love this method, I'll be honest, for doing the gold flakes. It's quite finicky um, and I feel like it would probably be easier if I just got a polish that has a gold flake in it. If you have any recommendations, please let me know. I have plenty of gold glitter polishes, but I'm looking for one with these irregular shaped flakes. And so far the ones that I've tried, unfortunately have been pretty cloudy. They don't give like a nice clear finish. So maybe I'll have to make my own. But here I'm just kind of showing you the behind the scenes of how messy nails can get. So I cleaned everything up and then applied on top of each nail, the Koopa matte top coat. I'm going to be doing an ombre and so I wanted a matte surface to work on and if you're doing something with pigments, um, colored pencils, anything like that, I would really recommend this Koopa matte top coat. It is pretty thin so you know you're not going to be adding too many layers of bulk to your nail art by using this product. I have not tried it with chrome so I cannot say whether or not it's good with isolated chrome application though other people have said it is. I'm using my MPA art palette. I did purchase this from Hay Nails because I wanted a wide variety of colored gels, painting gels. These are like a thicker consistency, really pigmented painting gel. And I thought I would use it for the ombre today. So I'm taking a little sponge. I'm cutting it in half. Thank you so much to the suggestion of one of my subscribers for this. The original sponge is just a little too big in my opinion. So this worked amazingly. And I'm just dabbing that in some of the paint. And then I'm going to be using this to do my ombre. I thought it would work well because it is quite an opaque color. It can be easier to get a good ombre with an opaque color if you're doing the sponge method because the sponge method will tend to soak up a lot of the product. So you want something that is going to be quite opaque and a really thin coat. I did attempt here to use my base gel method to kind of blend the edges because it did have some of that sponge texture, which isn't super noticeable, but it's also not quite as smooth as like an airbrush. However, I didn't really like how this looked. I think that the MPA art palette gel is just a little bit too thick to ombre with this method. So I wiped it off and started over with just a sponge and that worked out perfectly fine. I ended up doing, I think, three layers of this, maybe even four, really building up that color on the nail bed edge. And I think it looks pretty good. I do have an airbrush, but I've heard some things about how you don't want to aerosolize gel. So I haven't really brought it out again. I do have some acrylic paints that I might try with it soon, but I just, um, I didn't want to try to mess with that with a new customer's order when I didn't exactly know what I was doing. So I just did the sponge technique this time and you can actually take a clean sponge and kind of dab the edges if you think the line is too harsh and that will help blur those edges too. So now on to the fun part that maybe all of you were waiting for. These are some petals that I pre-made off camera because otherwise we would be sitting here for hours on end. So these are the tools I use to sculpt these petals. You want to take a wire of your choice, can be gold, can be silver. I've done some silver petals before. And this I think is either 28 or 24 gauge. It's something pretty skinny because you want to have good flexibility with it. You don't want to be struggling with bending the wire. So. I take the end and I'm going to loop it around some sort of round implement. Here I'm actually just using a q-tip cut in half. 
Whatever you choose to use, you just want to make sure it doesn't have a flared edge because you do need to be able to pull that wire off of the end of the tool. So I wrap it around, give it a twist to secure the ends together, and then just nip it with some wire cutters to free it from the rest of the wire. Now you want to have different sized petals. So in addition to using that Q-tip, I'm also just using like a plastic pusher, a cuticle pusher, and um, the handle of a nail brush to get three different sizes of loops that will eventually turn into the petals. Variety is good because then you can create interest in your design. If all the flowers are the exact same size, I personally just don't think it looks as good, so I like the different size variation here. You could really do as many size variations as you want, that's personal preference. I'm just twisting these around, really holding those two ends together securely so that your twist is nice and tight, so that you have a good closed loop that's not going to come undone when you start painting these. And I really recommend that you have a set of wire clippers for this, or at least a dedicated set of nail trimmers because they will dull. So the next step is to take a pair of tweezers. You need something that is skinny like this, that has a straight skinny edge, and you're going to take those loops and first elongate them to be more of an oval shape by just pulling the end. And then once you do that, you're going to take your tweezers, clamp down in the middle of the outer tip of that loop and then turn your tweezers inward to create this little divot here. This gives you that classic Sakura petal shape. And then I'm just curving these petals outward by wrapping them around that brush handle. So you want to do this for every petal, elongate it to an oval first, and then take your tweezers and make that little indent at the edge of the nail. These tweezers here are the kind that you want because if they are too big, you won't be able to get like a really nice little indent. You need something with a skinny tip and something with a straight tip. Having a straight tip is really important too. So you want a really nice, good, sturdy pair of tweezers for this. Especially when you get down to the smaller sized petals, the fine tip is going to be pretty important for getting that little detail added. And then just carving these. The curve is so that when you go to lay it on the nail, it's going to stick up in a nice shape. If you do them perfectly flat, um, it's going to be harder to get them adhered and in a way that looks natural. So just give it a little bit of a curve. Just a teeny tiny bit even helps. I did take off my gloves for this process because I do find wire work with gloves is a lot more difficult. And now I'm going to be making the little stems. Uh, here's a sneak peek at like all of the math that I did to try to figure out exactly how many petals that I would need. These are just some little beads from Michael's, some iridescent clear beads that I'm using for the stems. Just sticking a bead on a piece of wire, pushing it down a little bit, and then twisting the ends together, just like the petals, except for this time, instead of leaving a loop at the end, you're going to pull it and twist it tight so that it clamps on to that little bead and it's not going anywhere. This set of pliers, if you're interested in picking them up yourself, I did get them off of uh, Michael's online. I do believe they have them in store too. It's just a set of jewelry pliers. So this is very much um, jewelry making techniques. I've seen this sort of like wire and beading method in resin jewelry and so if you would like to have the proper tools for it, you can check the beading section of Michael's of any sort of craft store. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy jewelry tools if you're planning on trying this design, but I would say it helps. It definitely helps to have the proper tools, especially like these needle nose pliers because I could not get a good enough grip on this the end of it that is to get such a tight twist with just my hands. I had to take off my gloves in the first place because working with wire with gloves on is just, it's a little bit difficult, it's harder to feel, and so even with using my bare hands, I still couldn't get that nice fine twist without those pliers. And here are all of the branch pieces finished. Now I have to paint the petals. 
so I'm just sticking this to a swatch stick with some double-sided tape on it, some double-sided nano tape, making sure that they are curving upwards. You don't want them curving down because we want the polish to pull more towards the um, bottom edge. So I'm using the Mayo Peach Peach Collection number two for the base color and my Diami Pin Care Lamp. If you've ever blown bubbles, this is sort of a similar situation. You wanna take that polish and make sure that you are connecting the polish from edge to edge between that wire frame. The surface tension of the liquid is going to keep it stretching. And once you have a good layer, you just flash cure it. I do this for all six petals and then give them all a full cure in my big lamp. Super grateful to Sweetie Nail Supply because they did gift me this pin care lamp. It is honestly so bright. Here's a comparison between my cheap Timu lamp and this one. It's great for pin curing, for spot curing, because it has a really skinny nozzle to it um, at the, the end so that you can direct the light exactly where you want it. It is expensive, I will say that. It's definitely not for everybody. If you don't have the budget, please don't feel like you need to get this lamp. I only have it because they gifted it to me, so I'm super grateful for that, but it is a really nice product. So here are all of the petals painted. Once I fully clear them, I'm going in with two polishes here. I ended up mixing them together to get the perfect color. The only reason I'm doing this color mix is because I'm trying to keep this pretty true to the original design that I had posted on my Etsy. I always want to make sure that my customers' expectations are met based on the pictures they buy from because everybody knows um, it's such a bummer to order something that looks one way online and then arrives and does not look like that. Um, if I were to ever redo this set or maybe give it a bigger twist, then I would probably change the colors I'm using here slightly to be easier so I'm not like custom mixing colors together um, for it. Here I'm just going in and adding some definition to those petals by making the edge slightly darker. The nice thing about syrup gels is that they are really easy to ombre with, especially in a smaller area like this where you're not really going to see big brush strokes. You get a really nice blend with, I would say, somewhat minimal effort, although I did have to go in and paint every single petal <laughs> by hand which is part of why this set is considered for me a luxury set. Now I'm taking the crazy top standard top coat. You can see this is quite viscous, like it does move around pretty easily. And I'm just going to top coat all of these to preserve that art. You could potentially dip the petals into a top coat. I just find it too thick to do that. It gets way too um, thick of a layer when I have tried that method. So I'm just brushing it on gently here. This is the Mayo Square Piano Brush. I am loving this thing recently. It is so gentle, so soft, and it just floats the polish on so easily. So yeah, that's on Sweetie Nail Supply too. I'll link it. You can also use my code, get pressed for 10% off. Um, that one I bought though. They didn't send that to me. I've purchased it and I have since then purchased another. And now I'm just using those little wire cutters and trimming off the edge. So really the twisted portion, the only point of that was to be a handle for when you're painting. Unfortunately, I will say this design does end up with a lot of waste, but is what it is. Um, with these smaller petals, I will warn you, they do tend to fly away when you cut them. So I just like wrap my hand around them and the wire cutters when I'm detaching them, make sure they don't get lost. To affix these to the nail, I'm going to use the Jinbi Clear Fix Gel. The stuff is nice and thick. I thought it would be enough to hold up the large flowers on its own, but you'll see here, um, just the Fix Gel. It was fine for one petal, but once I start putting on, you know, all five, these are a little bit of heavier charms, and so, it, it just wasn't working, it wasn't thick enough. So what I ended up doing actually was taking some of the Yogo 3D Clear Clay Gel and I just take a teeny tiny little piece of that, stick it to the nail, 
And then I used some of that Fix It gel over that clay and that gave me the absolute perfect consistency of glue gel to ensure that those petals would stay placed and I could really position them how I wanted them. Sorry if my voice sounds a little rough today. I'm actually recording the voiceover after my first full week back at school. It was just teachers for this week, but we had quite a few meetings, um, and so I was doing a lot more talking than usual, and I think my voice is just maybe not used to that, and so it's a little bit scratchy, but that's okay. I'm excited to see all of the students again, and I'm sure if you're a parent out there, you are ready for your kid to go back to school. So that is coming up for me here soon. I will say, um, I apologize in advance. I probably will be on YouTube less in terms of like commenting and socializing on both my channel and the channel of those I follow. Um, unfortunately, I just got really busy during the school year and I do want to keep up with doing school and nail content and being able to put out videos for you guys. So I probably will be a little bit less active. I'll try to drop hearts and likes here on your video so if I can't comment no I love you all and I really appreciate my community that I built here it's been so much fun having this channel getting to share my thoughts on nail products show off what I have purchased and hopefully help you all with your purchases if you are looking for swatches reviews whatnot um it's it's been fun so this portion of the video is um me just applying all of the embellishments I'm applying each petal one by one, organizing them how I think they will look best, and then adding some pearls and some little caviar beads to the center to kind of emulate the pollen coming from the center of a flower. Now this set is definitely my most complicated. It is my most expensive currently on the website on Etsy. I will be honest, I'm probably going to be removing it if you really, really want a set, you can email me. My email is in my description. You can also private message me on Instagram, on Etsy. I just, it's a lot of work. I probably should be charging a little bit more, to be honest, um, with the amount of time it takes me to do this. I have to hand paint, hand place, hand sculpt each petal, do the base nail, the ombre, all of that. And really the real reason I think that I'm going to be removing it is just I want to respect um dreamy little nails I know she doesn't particularly like doing this set I think she's done it a couple times but for the same reasons it's just a really hard set to create and I it's her design I did slightly change it but I would say I'm not comfortable with the amount that I've changed it um sell it as my own design I know there are a lot of artists out there, nail artists, who are totally fine with recreating others' work, and I know there are a lot of artists who are completely fine with people doing that as long as they tag them, and I do really try to tag like all my inspirations just to make sure that I'm giving credit where credit is due. But even with all of that, um, I don't know. I personally, I want to take pride in the work that I create and the designs that I make. And I, I just want them to be my own, you know? I want to make sure that they're my spin on things. And at the beginning of my nail art journey, I did feel like changing the color was kind of enough um, to differentiate it. But now that I'm further into my nail art journey and really like considering who I want to be as a nail artist, I just, I personally probably won't do any sort of like 100% or even 90% recreations of a design unless it's a specific customer request and maybe unless I get permission from the original artist, something like that. I just, that's my personal goal. Again, no shade, no sort of criticism to anyone who does recreations. I know that that is a big market in the nail art world. And quite frankly, not everyone can access everyone's art, especially if they're a nail artist who does nail art in person. You know, somebody living in Texas can't travel all the way to Seattle to get a specific design from an artist they like. So I totally understand recreations. I just personally, um, I probably won't be doing too many going forward uh, just because, um, yeah, I just, I just wanna uh, respect people's artistry 
and work on designs that I'm proud of and that are, I feel like, a reflection of my artistic ability. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm always inspired. There are always going to be designs that I will tag as inspiration if I have been inspired by someone else because as much as I would love to say I'm super creative and can pull designs out of my head with no inspiration, usually there is some. <laughs> More often than not, I've seen a design or at least a trend that I'm really a big fan of. And so I will get my ideas from there and try to build off of them to create my own art. That's my little spiel um, on um, my design process and kind of where I want to go with it. But someone actually did request a video on how I do these Sakura nails. And so I thought since I did this for a press on order, I would show you guys and please, please, please check out the dreamy little nails channel. I will link her in the comments below. Not that she needs any shout outs. Um, she's an amazing artist. I think a lot of you probably already know her, especially if you're into Korean nail art. She's huge inspiration for me. She doesn't need a little channel like mine shouting her out, but I like to share anyways. Here. I am just applying the little branches. I stick them in that same fix gel, just the end of it. I position them how I want them to be. Under the petals is a really good place. It means that you can kind of like wedge them in there and then use my flash curing lamp to give them a good cure. Make sure that they're staying. I am going to go over all of these charms completely with some clear gel at the end just to make sure that they're nice and sturdy and not going anywhere, but for now, a flash cure is good enough. And once I have everything attached, it's all ready to go, I'm going to be taking a mixture of that standard thickness crazy top gel and using that to coat all of the nails, all of the petals, and then also using the crazy top thick gel to just really go around the edges of those charms and make sure that they're nice and sealed. I don't want these going anywhere. Even though the charms are a little bit more on the delicate side, I always do this with every nail set that I make because the last thing I want to hear is a customer who is disappointed because they've lost their charm in the first couple days, you know, something like that. So all of my charms, I really, really try to give um, a good seal to, to make sure that they are not going to go anywhere. I also go over each petal and the little pearls because I've found that the pearls can lose their shine over time if you don't top coat over them. So I make sure to go over each flower with this thin consistency gel. It's thin enough where it's not going to affect the shape or anything. It's just going to add a nice protective layer and it will keep those caviar beads from becoming dislodged in case they get bumped or anything like that. Um, the only thing that I don't really go over per se are the branches just because I want them to be able to um, move a little bit, the beads that is. So I don't go over those. You probably could if you really wanted to. And then I'm also making sure to really get the edges of the nails good. Make sure that I'm sealing in all of the art and the paint. Now I'm taking a liner brush and I'm dipping that into the thick gel, the Junbi Crazy Thick. This is before curing that soft gel overlaying the entire nail. And I am taking that and lining the edges of each charm just to make sure there's an added layer of protection, of adhesion for them. And also, I don't really want any super sharp edges on this. Nobody likes when things snag, if there are really teeny tiny little crevices under a charm. So I just make sure to get rid of all of that, smooth everything out, and ensure that these charms are not going to go anywhere. So. This is a big step that I do in all of my nail designs where I have a lot of charms just because um, I want to make sure that they are nice and stuck and that I don't get any disappointed customers because their charms disappeared. It is a time consuming step, I will say. 
on a set with a ton of charms. It does probably take me a good 30 minutes to get them all sealed in, but I'm also a bit of a perfectionist. It's probably why I work so slowly. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that everything looks really nice, especially for a paying customer. I want them to get the quality that they ordered, but it does mean that unfortunately, um, these sets take me a long time. I may actually end up closing my shop here over the school year just because I get so busy, but we'll see. Here is the final step. I detach all of the nails from the stands and I make sure the edges are nice and clean. And I'm also, I've begun filing the inside of the nails just for better adhesion. I'm just using a little handheld file here. I do actually have exciting news. So probably Tuesday or Wednesday, I will be posting a video that is a review of not necessarily nail polish, but more nail tools. So I have a couple lamps to show you, um, a new nail drill and a new dust collector. Some of the stuff I was sent for PR for the purpose of reviewing, some of it I had purchased myself. And so I just thought I would share what I learned. A lot of them are professional grade. So I am trying to move towards using really high quality products that I know are going to last me years instead of like using cheaper things that I know I will then have to rebuy in the future. So I'm super fortunate um, in that I got to try some of the products and not so fortunate in that I spent probably hundreds of dollars buying some of them too. So yeah, um, if you are looking to upgrade to some professional grade items, definitely stick around for that video. I'll give you kind of like the pros and cons of the different things that I tried. Um, but yeah, back to this, I am just dusting off my nail tips after doing that filing and then it's time for them to go in their case. So these are just little clear acrylic cases. I get them off of Timu and then I stick the nails in them with a little bit of double-sided nano tape. If I do eventually end up making press-ons like a full-time business, I would like to upgrade my cases, maybe get some custom packaging. I know Dreamy Little Nails does absolutely amazing packaging for her set, um, for her nail design sets that she sends out to customers. So. I would love to get there at some point, but right now nails are actually just a side thing for me, um, something I do while I teach. I do really appreciate though everybody who uses my codes, who supports this channel. You're really helping me and enabling me to keep making content for you all because I don't have like a ton of extra income to spend on nail products to try out, to test, to swatch, to review and all of that. So having this channel, having my affiliate links, that sort of thing has really helped me with being able to continue to do content and show you guys things that are hopefully helping you make smarter purchases while still doing teaching because um, teaching doesn't pay very well. So <laughs> I will say that um, I love it, but it is not the most glamorous of jobs. Uh, so yeah, I, I just, I really appreciate everyone. Uh, I honestly do. And it's so much fun talking in the comments. I'm sad that I won't be able to probably do it quite as much here with school starting, but I will definitely try to set aside time for that because it is something that I enjoy. I, it's, it's almost like a second job for me that I, that I like doing. Um, I, I come home and after school, if I don't have any grading to do, I work on nail content, but it's relaxing for me. It's fun, it's enjoyable. I get to interact with a great community. If you haven't checked out my Discord, I will link it below if that's a social media that you use. We have a lot of fun on there, um, sharing product reviews, discount codes, asking questions if you have any about nail tips, whatnot. Um, it's been really fun so far. So. Here is the finished design. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I really hope the customer is also happy. She, um, I think received them at this point a couple days ago. Finishing touch for the packaging is I put on my little branded sticker. Another tip I guess that I uh, haven't maybe mentioned is if you are somebody who's trying to start a business, who's trying to start a YouTube, definitely check out Canva. That's where I make all of my thumbnails. 
I made this little custom sticker design in Canva. Same with these cards here, these instruction cards. And then I just got them printed from uh, Vistaprint. Once I have my nail set ready to go, I do use an extra layer of bubble wrap to protect them. And I stick them in a little bubble mailer. If it's only one set, I can get away with these five by seven bubble mailers, but if it's more than one, I definitely need either a bigger bubble mailer or sometimes I'll use a box just depending. You also get a little application kit that comes with your buffer, your file, your alcohol wipes, a pusher, your sticky tabs, your glue, and then just some cute little stickers that I got for freebies. I actually showed these off in a Timu haul that I posted somewhat recently. I'll link that up in the corner if you want to check it out, but get their little kit prepared. I did recently get these little butterfly clips that are cute. They're just a little freebie thing. They're um, definitely not something that like I sell on its own or anything. I don't even know if people use them, but I know a little free gift is always nice in an order and I seal it up use one more of my stickers to make sure that that package does not get open before it arrives at its destination and then i would put the label on the front and that is the set that is the design here is actually a set i'd made originally for this as like product photos for my nails these are a long coffin shape you can tell my ombre is not that great here. Um, it's a little bit patchy, so I have definitely upgraded my ombre since then, but I really do love this design. It's gorgeous. All credits to Dreamy Little Nails. Please check her out. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever recreated a look and how that went for you. I really appreciate you all being here once again. I hope you have a wonderful morning, evening, night, wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Bye.